Welcome to Circuit of the Americas. It's time for Pirelli GT4 America Sprint Qualifying. Hi, everybody. Greg Creamer and Calvin Fish back with you here in the booth. And uh, Ryan Marine down in pit lane. We'll be there for the weekend as well. Looking forward to this one, the sprint class in Pirelli GT4 America, one of the categories that is virtually unchanged. There is one change that has happened, and I think it's got a lot of the pro drivers concerned, is they made Drew Stavely after two amp <laughs> championships a pro, and he's just destroyed the field in both practice sessions, Cal. Yeah, he's been very strong. That G3 racing, Ian Lacey racing team have been uh, doing the homework. Uh, they did an event earlier this year to try and get some uh, track time with that Ford Mustang they switched to last year, and uh, it's paying dividends. I mean, Drew has won a couple of championships over the last uh, two seasons, and now he jumps up to the pro ranks to see what he can do. And, our defending champion is not back, Ian James. Um, he's moved on, but Michael Cooper's back, Spencer Pompelli's back. You've got guys like Jared Andretti, who showed so much promise and potential with the race victories last year. Can they step up and become a championship contender as well? So it should be a fascinating season. Yeah, we have Jeff Courtney, who of course won the championship a couple of years ago, uh, is back and with a new manufacturer as he is running uh, two different cars under what is now called the Rec Stuff Racing Tent. He's in a Mercedes, and Fred Roberts, a longtime friend and teammate of his in an Aston Martin. I think a big opportunity here is Paul Terry, who we have seen in touring car competition, a little bit erratic at times, but incredibly quick. He stepped up into the AM category in GT4 here uh, with an Aston Martin Vantage being fielded by Reardon Racing. And I think that's going to be something to see. And then Mark Clennon, who's been a longtime supporter of this championship, has run another manufacturer in the past for a number of years. Is here now. You see him right there in that uh, Sin R1 GT4, which uh, showed some speed on this track in the past in the hands of a guy named Harry Gottsacker. Yeah, the car's very good. And uh, talking to the team this weekend, they just said uh, with Mark, they liked the McLaren chassis, but they had so many electronic aids, it was really masking a lot. And it really wasn't helped Mark develop as a driver. So they think they got a bit more back to basics in terms of a more analog car than an electronic car. Uh, and uh, they said, I think that's going to be the way to go moving forward. Here's the Andretti entry you were talking about, the endurance warranty, number 18. Uh, and, of course, we have Michael Cooper is coming back, who was so close to the championship last year. It had an absolutely great run for uh, the team he's been with on and off for many years in terms of uh, black dog racing. And then Spencer Pompelli is back with TRG, and we... Save for a couple of, uh, of incidents uh, regarding some uh, some tires, he could have been right oh, in the thick of so. it. I mean, he was so fast. Yeah, Spence is one of the best in the business. We're now looking at Drew Stavely putting together a lap. He's certainly the quickest man on the right now. Not in terms of putting a lap together yet, but through the sectors. And as you said, showcased his speed in both practice sessions here this weekend, top of the charts. But, uh, yeah, Spence is going to be... Uh, Certainly one of the drivers to be, but I think it's, uh, it's a small pro category, but it is stacked. Yeah, it truly is. And, uh, yeah, he was turning time, Stavely was. He had a 2.16.5 in the first practice session, a 2.16.8 in the second one, and uh, it was Spencer Pompelli in the second session who was the closest to him with then Michael Cooper uh, sitting in third, and then it was Cooper and Jared Andretti second, third with Spencer fourth in the previous one and a guy who's been showing really good speed here as well as Michael Dynan. He was uh, tops in the AM category in one of the sessions and uh, uh, again he's making a switch with that uh, Flying Lizard team. Yeah over to the Aston Martin this year from the Porsche Cayman so uh, and he's uh, doubling up. He's doing the sprints with Robbie Foley so a lot of seat time on each individual race weekend. Not going to do all of the championship years. He's going to uh, see uh, races. He's going to miss uh, Long Beach for example but um, tends to be around for the majority of the championship season in both categories. It's been a good commitment. We've got Mark Clennon that we talked about uh, in that car, but Marco Radisic back in his familiar BMW from Precision Driving Tech says that uh, every plan to have that be a full season program as well. So Staying good to the top immediately, and that's a time that's quicker than he ran here yesterday. It is by a couple of tenths, so uh, up on the wheel early. You'd expect him to be able to trim those times down a little bit from all that. More oh, that's his first flying lap there, so he can put together another clean one. Expect some lap times in the 2.15s at least. This category did not run here last year, the sprint category. Last time we've seen him run was in 17 and 18, and the uh, Harry Gottsacker, I talked about that sin, had the pull at a 2.17.5. We're already well underneath that with that lap by Stavely. We had Jason Bell sitting atop the AM order for just a minute there, and then Dynan came through. 
and was able to sneak underneath his time. Gaples and Clennon as well. Well, Davis, Andrew Davis in uh, the Porsche in Sprint X ran a 15, I think, a little bit earlier in, uh, in the qualifying runs this morning. So expect these drivers to be at least down at that range. As Spence is now on a good one. Personal best, first sector. Overall best, second sector. This is a good lap he's putting together here. Back with TRG once again. Had a bit of a hiatus, started with them, I think, back in 2006, then uh, went over to different pastures for a while, but he's come back to uh, Kevin Buckler and the TRG group. Beautiful drift there through 18. That was superb. <laughs> That's at LaSalle Solutions machine. With the Racing Series Wines, part of the Adobe Road Winery. Thank you for wines for them, award winning. Here we go, what does he do? It's Cooper that's gone to the top around Stavely and Pompelli, there you go, 216 flat, Cooper at a 216-1. There's the group. He anticipated uh, those names being towards the top for the season and uh, opening session of the first qualifying <laughs> run and making a statement. Definitely a decently nice dry piece of real estate. Spencer here now attacking the S's. You need so much discipline through here in a GT machine. Don't have the downforce of a prototype or a Formula One car that this car track was essentially uh, set up for. So the car will give up on you. It's very easy to overdrive this section of the racetrack. So you have to be disciplined, and it's a very technical race circuit. When Spencer first came here and made comments he wasn't absolutely in love with it, but I think it's grown on him now, and he's certainly getting the job done here today as he runs second right now. As Stavely has jumped to the top with a 2.15.7. There we go. That's a quick lap. Here is uh, Cooper. Get double track time this weekend with the McLarens running with Flying Lizard. The Sprint X category. A McLaren factory gun. Jeff Burton, nice lap, jumps up for a second into the provisional pole and am and is immediately displaced by Dynan. Gannett sits third now, then Gables, then Bell. Nice run by Frank Gannett early in the session. This is good stuff. See if he can uh, step up a little bit this year, learning his craft, and uh, he's got great tutelage with Ian Lacey running the team and certainly his teammate Drew Stavely giving him the data to work from. Toby Gerhovic, another of the pros in this category in the classic BMW entry. Track limits there, yeah, possibly. It sure was. A little bit wide through 19, and uh, they've been uh, dinging drivers for that. See where this lap puts Cooper momentarily, at least. 216.17. His best was a 216.10. It's got to be so clean through that final second. You're trying to bring every last tenth out of the race car, but if you exceed that track limits, they've really got their eyeballs on those last yes. couple of corners. Looking at Dynan's time at 216.7. That's a very solid run for him. Burton next up at a 218.1. So Dynan's got the field covered at this stage. And Andretti at 216.9. Lost a little bit of track time with uh, Jared Andretti's McLaren earlier in the weekend, so they got to rebound a little bit here. Pompelli is pitted. And there's still time, but by rule, if you do any work on the car in the pit lane, any times you have set are essentially thrown out. And I wonder if he's saying, I'm not going to go chase. As Stavely improves his time to a 2.15.5, I wonder if Spencer's saying, I'm not going to go try and chase that and the tires out and, uh, and, and save him for the race. Yeah. Or will they do a little tire pressure adjustment, get him back out, and let him throw another one down here? Yeah, managing that tire lock is certainly a key strategy uh, to play to the weekend. Here we're looking at Jared Andretti now. Quite working to his liking there. Just didn't look that smooth and balanced through turn 15. That very tight left-hander. Looks like they may have dinged him as well for the track limits because he was up in sixth overall at one point. Now he's way down the order. Particularly this corner. If you run wide through here, you're going to lose the lap you're on and they're going to exclude the next lap. So this is really 
key corner to keep a clean through. Right oh. outside the steward's room. <laughs> Jumps to fifth. Yeah, he's <laughs> Jumps to fifth, so that was a good one. That now is a 217 4, so that puts him back up fifth overall. So we'll see Jarrett kind of run that unique, kind of shallow angle approach to a lot of these corners where he really leans on the ABS and he asks a lot from the car in terms of the setup with the engineer to get it to turn at that critical point at apex. But he seems to make it work. It was very effective last year, but quite unique. Here's a look at the lone Serbian entry uh, from a driver's perspective. Uh, Marco Radisic. Set new world record for that 24 hour. Broke his own event. world record doing a kart race by himself for 24 hours. It was cold in the booth today. Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. Well, and the one thing that Marco has a real tendency to do is he, he works on all he does in the car, he doesn't worry about qualifying times. He works on the car on the oldest tires he can possibly get so that he want, he said, I want to be fast at the end of the race relative to everybody else. Yeah. That's a little bit wide. Yeah, he's going to get dinked for that one. So yeah. three minutes left. You just got to clean up. So you, you've had a chance to uh, attack the racetrack right now. Now you've just got to be disciplined. You've got to put it together here because time is running out if you want to be at the sharp end of the grid. Stavely has pitted. He has a 215.59. Pompelli still out at a 216 flat. Cooper at a 216.1. They're still out there. Well, it says Pompelli now on an outlap. So I wonder if they did a little tweak to something. Normally you would think that quick of a stop, it might just be a tire pressure, pressure change yeah. of some sort. And you're restricted, otherwise you erase all, if any work is done on the exactly. car, any times you've already done, you wouldn't want to give up a front row grid position for a maybe pole, so that'd be too risky with uh, just a couple of minutes left on the board. So certainly uh, we expected to see these names towards the top, stably on pole right now from Pompelli and Cooper. Terry jumps to... Uh, provisional pole in Am. That's a nice lap from him. Yes, and, uh, it is. First time aboard the Aston Martin entry in this form of competition, at least. Pip Dynan by two one hundreds. That is close. The momentum it, in terms of the Aston Martin entries this year, yes, as you can is. see, is another one. Fred Roberts. Of, uh, yeah, a lot of speed that we've seen from Terry over the years. Seven manufacturers in the field this year, led by the Aston Martin with four, then BMW three, McLaren three, Porsche three, Ford, a couple of cars, Stavely and Gannett, then the Sin and the Mercedes. Yeah, those, I have to say, those, those Aston Martins are good looking machines. I remember the Rec stuff racing banner this year. Yeah. Cars look superbly presented so exciting times for that group all right here's a look at spencer and uh might get back to the line get another one in i yeah. think so looking at the clock it's usually halfway around so it's, it's got a hustle tight, but he can do it tight. stavely remains in the pits pompelli cooper and uh, paul terry Fourth overall, provisional Ampole still out there. Then Dynan has pitted. Andretti's still out there. Burton and Gannett, third and fourth. I am really impressed with Frank Gannett. Fourth in the Am category. Yeah, that's a great run. It really is. Talk about some momentum. That's a, that's a huge jump in performance from, uh, from last season. Spencer Spencer's timed this run. I think he's just going to get there. It's going to be tight, though. And the problem is, is he's got some potential traffic here. It's super tight. Can he squeak it and get another lap? Even he doesn't get it. I think he's good. Yeah. I think he's good. He's close. He's around here. Right there. Three seconds. <laughs> But as, as I said, the issue is, is that car that's up in front of him, that is Terry. You just don't want to have that guy blunt your attack here too much. Right. Although Terry's been running fairly quick laps. Here's a look at the wreck stuff Kenda entry, just briefly, of previous class champ. 
Jeff Courtney. We saw. You see right. the unique situation where the start line and the finish line are in two different spots. So yeah, I think yeah. Spencer did just uh, clear that finish line in time. All right, here's Tony Gaples, who drives the 11 entry for Black Dog. Talked to Tony yesterday, said they're just trying to knock the rust off. Um, didn't do any off-season testing, so first time back on the racetrack since Vegas was uh, here yesterday. Gaples getting moved all the way down outside of the top 10. And right behind Gaples there, you see the number two. That is the very busy Jason Bell in his sprint Robert machine. Chavez, He's busy this weekend doing four now. races. We're going to be even busier <laughs> at some of the uh, exactly. Sports Club America events. We'll be running six races on a weekend, so that's certainly why you're sharpening up your racing skills. That's some track time. And unfortunately for Grohovic, he's uh, pretty much been in the pit most of the session, so they're dealing with some sort of an issue. Same power, same in this last lap, if he is going to finish it off. Well, like I said, I wonder if that Aston Martin in the hands of Terry had just been enough of a, you know, Spencer doesn't get distracted, but there are just times you just can't do anything with it. Yeah. Let's see, all right. Uh, does Tony, he's currently seventh in the AM category. Flashes across, does jump up, gets a spot. Ooh, but Bell, look at that lap by Bell. Really nice lap, third. They'll Up be stoked with that. Right now. Courtney fourth, Quinlan fifth. That's a great lap by Jason Bell. Carl will be starting from pole in the uh, second race for Sprint X here this weekend with Andrew Davis topping those charts here this morning. Let's see Bell's time at 2.17. So yeah, that's a very nice lap for Jason. So top five are all in the pits. Checker is out. So it looks as though st it'll be Stavely, Pompelli, Cooper, the top three, all pros. And an impressive run by Paul Terry and the Reardon Aston Martin to That's an awesome run for Paul Terry, yeah, yeah, Reardon Racing. Did the homework over the off-season with that Aston Martin, but for that Paul Terry, that's a great start for yeah, this yeah. And Dynan continuing to press in the Aston Martin for Flying Lizard. And Andretti sixth overall. Jason Bell third in his Porsche, this car right here. And Jeff Courtney fourth in the AM category, eighth overall, the 99 Kenda Rec Stuff, Rec Stuff Racing Kenda Mercedes, and then fifth in the AM category, ninth overall, the 119 of Sean Quinlan running for Stephen Cameron Racing in the BMW M4 GT4. Here's a look at the field. Again, white numbers with the red background are the AM cars. And, uh, even though, it, you know, they trim the margin from Pelly Cooper at all to Stavely, it's still pretty substantial. It is. It? It's pretty much been the dominant car all weekend. Obviously, 50-minute sprint race here this afternoon, different story than one lap. But if they got the tire degradation under control and the long run pace, uh, it could be tough to beat here today. These cool conditions certainly can't be hurting either, obviously, so that's uh, something that can play well into their hands. Take a look at the iconic tower there at Circuit of the Americas. We'll go back, take a look at some highlights. At some of the drivers that have made switches in cars. I like that graphics back there. Copy entry, but that howl out of that V8 tells you it's Drew Stavely in that Mustang, and uh, he was quick from the very first lap. He really was. He looked like he was going to be the man to beat, and he kept it at the top. Uh, Great run by Spencer Pompelli. A line up alongside him on the front row. So look at Marco Radisic. He's trying to bring that car up through the field. 